Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and a geography degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If that is something that you are interested in, subscribe now. You hit that notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, so don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that would really happen all that you like to see more content like this without further ado you guys let's jump into the video good morning everybody isang magandang umagang morning ng friday sa inyong lahat welcome back sa aking channel nako Siyempre, today, uh, for this week, this is our last up uh, upload upload for this week. And kagaya nga ng pinangako ko sa inyo, three times a week nga po ako nag upload ng aking video. Now, this is another entry natin sa ating Nursing Cheat Sheet playlist, your nursing study guide. And this is one of those um, uh, laboratory values. Now, this is highly requested because like you see on the title today, we're finally going to talk about the cardiac markers and CD room enzymes yes now before i further proceed with the discussion i would just like to th grab this opportunity to simply say thank you to you for keep on subscribing i uh, keep on subscribing keep on watching my videos commenting sharing my videos those are really a big help uh, pa, uh to on my channel liking my videos maraming maraming salamat po nakakabasa ako sa inyo ng mga comments na please don't skip ads <laughs> maraming maraming salamat po you guys you you have no idea how much how much you make me happy and eto na i have an important announcement to make tomorrow at exactly 3 a.m philippine time 3 a.m in the morning I am going to launch my very first podcast episode. And it's going to be available in all um, podcast um, listening platforms that you have. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, um, uh, Amazon Prime, I think. And it is going to be fun. I hope you, I hope I can see you guys there and please um please please follow and share and leave a comment on my podcast the name of the podcast though i finally came up with the name and i'm gonna be announcing it it is called the 3 a.m conversation the podcast with neil galve i'm gonna be sharing to you the intro um, of the podcast, just a snippet of what you can expect, and here it is. No one will pull you up from that situation that you have, that you are currently in, except you. If you don't help yourself, you will never be able to surpass that moment in your life. Welcome to 3 a.m. Conversation, conversation, the, the podcast. podcast. My name is Neil Galvin, and my intention is to help you achieve the highest and truest expression of yourself. I am grateful to have fascinating conversation with the most inspiring and insightful people. Allow me to share that conversation with you on my podcast. New episodes are every Tuesday and Saturday at, you guessed it, 3 a.m. Listen anywhere you get your podcast and don't forget to rate and review the podcast if you enjoy it. O oh, ba? Ayun na nga. So isang patikim pa lang yan na maaari nyong makinggan sa araw ng uh, sa episode natin for tomorrow. Very first episode, solo episode. Kaya naman, na nakikiusap ako sa inyong lahat. Please, please, pakinggan nyo and support me on my very first podcast um, episode. So, and I'm hoping that you guys can actually give me some topics that we can talk about. Like I said, the main intention of the podcast is, mm, alam nyo na, mental health, self-awareness, um, 
living, help me helping you to live your highest and truest expression of yourself. Now, before I further proceed, kung hindi ka pa nagsasubscribe pang pa Lucky Charm, please make sure na mag-subscribe ka na, uh, mag-subscribe ka na sa channel ko and follow me in all my other social media accounts, which is gonna be... Um, Uh, the links is going to be on the description box. And check out mo na yung other playlists, other videos I created under sa playlist ng Cheat Sheet. Kasi napakarami na nga po nun. Kasama nung ibang mga uh, nursing educational videos ko dito sa ating channel. Now, like I said, this is all about cardiac markers and serum enzymes. Let this be your complete normal lab values, your nursing study guide. All right. Now, serum enzymes and cardiac markers are released into the circulation normally following a myocardial injury, MI, as seen an, uh, in an acute myocardial infarction or other conditions such as heart failure. Now, let me share to you our objectives for today. Now, cardiac enzymes po, iisa-isahin natin sila. We only have four cardiac enzymes. We have, we're going to discuss the following. Creatinine kinase, CK. We're gonna have myoglobin, or myoglobin, troponin 1 and troponin T, natriuretic peptides. Handa ka na ba? Handa na. Let's begin. First up, we're going to have creatinine kinase, or commonly known as your CK. Now, let's discuss this one. Now, creatinine kinase, or commonly known as CK, is an enzyme found in muscles and brain tissue that reflects tissue catabolism, resulting from what? Cell trauma. So, when you hear, or when you talk about CK, it is a um, an enzyme. Normally, this is an enzyme that is found in muscle brain resulting or after a muscle catabolism all right meaning cell trauma all right now the ck level begins to rise within uh, six hours of muscle damage peaks at 18 hours and returns to normal in two to three days please do not be um Do not disregard these uh, these time frames that I'm giving you because this is very critical and very crucial, especially when you're trying to rule out MI. All right, six hours of muscle damage peaks at 18 hours and returns to normal in two to three days. The test for CK is performed to detect myocardial or skeletal muscle damage or central nervous system damage. Now. When you talk about your CK, you're also going to talk about your isoenzymes, include CKMB, which is um, your major cardiac marker when, you talk, when you're trying to rule out where is the damage. Yung CKMB sa cardiac muscle yon. Talk about cardiac, um, cardiac damage. CKBB, that's, you're talking about damage sa brain. Enzyme yan na nare-release when there, whenever there's a damage sa brain. CKMM. Damage saan? Sa muscles. So, iso, um, iso enzymes. So, malilito. These are, what? These are the, um, these are one of the iso enzymes. When you talk about CKMB, ito yung mga um, categories or classifications ng iyong CK. Alright? You have CKMB for cardiac, CKBB for brain, and CKMM for muscles. Don't worry because I'm gonna be talking about it on the next slide. Now, CKMM nga, kagaya ng sinasabi ko sa inyo, is found mainly in skeletal muscle. So, kapag may um, increase ng CKMM sa blood works ng pasyente mo, you can rule out that there is a skeletal muscle what? Damage. CKMB, when there is a release or high level, don't worry because I'm gonna give you the normal values later, high level of CKMB, Ano yung gusto ko matandaan mo? When you talk about CKMB, that is your cardiac muscle. Mainly, found mainly in cardiac muscle. CKBB sa anto, kagaya ng sinabi ko, sa brain tissue. So, pag may release ng CKBB, increase or um, elevated ang number ng CKBB mo, 
you're probably you're you're probably your patient is probably having brain tissue damage. That is how you're gonna approach this isoenzymes when you talk about CK. All right, malina yon, malina now. When you talk about the normal values for total creatinine kinase. Yung commonly known as CK, ito po yung diagram or yung table na ibibigay ko sa inyo. Alright? Let me read it to you. Now, we have um, SI units and your conventional units, your conventional range. Sa male, magkaiba po, ah, depende sa age group and depende sa gender. Male, when you talk about your SI units, that is a 917 to 2,833. Um, and cut per liter. When you talk about the conventional rate or con sa convention uh, range naman, a conventional range, it's 55 to 170 units per liter. That is the normal value. Uh, for female, 500 to 2,250 and cut per liter. When you talk about conventional range or conventional unit of measure, 30 to 135 units per liter. Sa mga newborn, meron din tayong tinitingnan na normal values. 1,133 to um, 9,667 NCAT per liter. When you try to use the conventional units, it's 68 to 580 units per liter. Once again, this is the normal value of your CK, total creatinine kinase. Serum total creatinine kinase. Okay? Malinaw ba yun? Malinaw. Now, isa-isahin natin yung mga isoenzymes natin kanina. May mga normal values din po yun. Eto na sila. These are the table for the normal values for, or this is the normal values for the total CK isoenzymes. Naalala mo pa ba si CKMM, CKMB, and CKBB? Eto sila. So, when you talk about your CKMM, that is 100%. Percentage pong unit of measure. Saan nga ulit si CKMM? Saan to? Sa muscle. Mostly enzyme na makikita sa muscle. So kapag more than sa average range ng 100%, that means meron kang muscle damage. Alright? May breakdown ng tissue doon. CKMB saan to? Myocardial damage. Muscle of the heart. 0% po nito. That is the normal range. Meaning, kapag nag 1% yan, 5%, 10%, you can rule out uh, MI. Magsa-start na yun ang MI protocol. Okay? CKBB, saan to? Sa brain tissue damage. Normal nito, 0%. Meaning, wala talaga tong enzyme na makikita sa dugo ng tao. Alright? So, once again, this is the normal values for your total CK isoenzymes. Malino ba yon? Malino. Now let me proceed with the uh, some of the disorders that you may uh, the the doctor may try to rule out whenever there's increase of your CPK and CPKM M isoenzymes. Kasama no mga isoenzymes natin kanina. Okay. Now when there is an increased levels of total creatinine phosphokinase CPK, ang doctor ay pwedeng irule out ang mga following disorders: disease or injury affecting the brain. Heart muscle and skeletal muscle. Period. When there is increased levels of CPK, MM, isoenzymes, saan nga ito? Skeletal muscle. Muscle. Not cardiac muscle, ha? Huh? Ano yun yung mga diseases or indications of increased number of your CK, MM, isoenzyme? Ito sila. Crush injuries. Sa mga vehicular accidents, mataas ba ang number ng CPK, MM nila? Yes. Ano pa? Delirium tremens. My muscle damage. Uh, electroconvulsive therapy. What else? Electromyography. Hypokalemia. Hypothyroidism. IM injections. Malignant hyperthermia. Muscular dystrophy. Myo, uh, myositis. Myositis. Let me say that one more time. Now, recent convulsions. Recent surgery. Rhabdomyolysis. Now, speaking of rhabdomyolysis, meron nga po akong medical surgical nursing uh, lecture regarding rhabdomyolysis. Panoorin mo yun ha? Kasi nasa medical surgical ano yun? 
uh, playlist ko. Pathophysiology ng, ng iyong rhabdomyolysis. Alright? What else? Shock. You have your trauma. Once again, these are the indications or the diseases or disorders that is probably your patient is having whenever you have the increase of CPK, uh, CPK and the increased level of your CPKMM. CPKMM, ano ulit ang normal value mo? More than 100%. I mean, normal value mo is 100%. Alright? Alright. So, next one. Ah, nasa isosome pa rin tayo ha, si CPKBB and CPKMB. Alright? BB saan to? Isipin mo BB, 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 brain. Alright? So, isa sa mga cardiac markers mo. Ano ang mga diseases na mairo-roll out mo kapag increase ang CPKBB? Probability ng um, uh, etiology ng pasyente mo. Ito siya. Adenocarcinoma, breast and lungs. What else? Disease involving the central nervous system. Brain tissue damage. Involved ba ang central nervous system mo? Definitely. What else? Pulmonary infarction. So these are the probable disorders that your patient is having whenever there's an increase in CPKBB isoenzyme. Next, increased levels of CPKMB isoenzyme. Unang-una, myocardial infarction. Acute myocardial infarction. What else? Cardiac aneurysm surgery. You are talking generally about what? Your cardiac muscle. Anything that has to do with your circulatory system. Papasok dito. Especially with your cardiac muscle. CPKMB, what is your normal value? Zero percent. Percentage, ha? Okay, malinaw yon. What else? Maring ang pasyente mo ay nagde-develop ng cardiac defibrillation or merong de uh, cardiac defibrillation. What else? Cardiac ischemia, myocarditis, inflammation of your myocardium. What else? Ventricular arrhythmias. Once again, these are the disorders, diseases that your patient is having whenever there is increased CPKBB or CPKMB. Alright? Now, let's proceed with the nursing considerations. Ano ang gagawin ng isang nurse whenever there is a patient who is for extraction ng um, um, cardiac enzymes? Specifically, yung CK natin. Um, yung mga isoenzymes natin. Ito sila. Madali lang naman. Una, if the test is to evaluate skeletal muscle, instruct the client to avoid strenuous physical activity for 24 hours before the test. Why? Extraneous activity or extraneous ac physical activity can actually produce what? False positive result. Why? Because you, your client, patakbohin mo yan o pagjimin mo yan. Nang, especially kapag leg day niya tapos kuhaan mo ng cardiac enzyme yan, for sure avoid ng avoidance ng strenuous physical activity for what? next 24 hours before the test what else? instruct the client to avoid ingestion of alcohol for 24 hours before the test lastly invasive procedures and intramuscular injections may falsely elevate CK levels remember you're talking about muscle breakdown all right, tissue muscle breakdown. So yun lang. Tapos na tayo sa ating um, CK, uh, one of the cardiac markers that we have. Proceed na tayo saan? Myoglobin. All right. So ito, iti discuss natin sila in details. Now, myoglobin, an oxygen binding protein that is found in straighted cardiac and skeletal muscle releases oxygen at a very low tensions. Any injury to skeletal muscle will cause a release of myoglobin into the blood. Skeletal muscle. Mind you. Alright? Myoglobin rise in 2 to 4 hours after an MI, making it an early marker for determining cardiac damage. May tanong sa board exam, what is the early cardiac marker ng iyong MI? Myoglobin is the right answer. Because of what? Alam mo na 2 to 4 hours after MI, magkakaroon ng increase ng myoglobin sa bloodstream. Right? 
right. Next na tayo. Now, normal na values ng iyong myoglobin, madali lang to. 5 to 70 nanograms per milliliter. 5 to 70 nanograms per milliliter. That is the normal value for your myoglobin. Meaning, kapag above 70, maaaring may MI ang pasyente mo. Alright? Tandaan mo yon, tandaan mo na. Eto na. Now, let's proceed with the, what are the possible indications why you have an increased myoglobin levels. Una, you have your malignant hyperthermia. Pangalawa, muscular dystrophy. What else? Myocardial infarction, MI. What else? Myositis. Next, rhabdomyolosis. Skeletal muscle ischemia. And lastly, skeletal muscle trauma. Okay? Now, as a nurse, what are the nursing considerations that you need to be mindful? First one, the level can rise as early as two hours after a myocardial infarction. This is the early cardiac markers, remember? With a rapid decline in the level after what? Seven hours. That is why this is very crucial. Pag onset ng chest pain ng pasyente mo and you're trying to rule out MI, in the first, in the early two hours of the chest pain na nage MI ang pasyente mo, nage chest pain ang pasyente mo, you have to have myoglobin blood extraction to rule out if it's really MI. Because this is the early cardiac markers. Naalala mo yon, And the decline of this uh, in the bloodstream is after 7 hours. Last one, because the myoglobin level is not cardiac specific and rises and falls so rapidly, its use in diagnosing myocardial infarction may be limited. That's why this is very restrictive actually. And it's not very specific to what? To the cardiac, um, uh, ca not cardiac, to, to the heart specifically because it can go through the skeletal muscles and it could also talk about your cardiac muscles and the the what's this the yung time frame yung timing niya kasi first two hours and nag -de -de nag nag -de decrease siya after seven hours ng MI so it's very limited. So once again, these are the nursing considerations and the indications of increased myoglobin levels. Malino ba sa inyo yon? Malino, mag-proceed na tayo sa pangatlo nating cardiac muscle, uh, cardiac marker, which is your tro uh, troponin 1 and troponin T. Alright, hinga-hinga, nakakahinga pa ba? Of course, absolutely. Eto na. Now, now, troponin is regulatory protein found in striated muscle, myocardial, and skeletal muscle in particular. Increased amounts of troponin or troponin are released into the bloodstream when an infarction causes damage to the what muscle of the heart? Myocardium. Troponin level ay nagtataas, nare-release siya sa bloodstream kapag may damage saan? Sa ang muscle? Myocardium. Troponin levels are elevated as early as 3 hours after MI. Kaya mapapansin mo sa hospital, sa hospital setting, ang doktor panay-panay ang pagkukuha ng cardiac markers mo, ang panay, palagian ng extractions mo. Kaka-extract mo pala, mag extract ka na naman ulit because they're trying to rule out every time that the patient, they're trying to rule out MI. Troponin T and troponin 1 start to rise. Remember this, remember this, ha, makinig. After 4 to 6 hours and peaks at 10 to 24 hours. Again, troponin T and troponin 1 start to rise after 4 to 6 hours of MI and peaks 10 to 24 hours. Kaya ang extraction mo, palagian. Troponin T returns to normal values after 10 days. Troponin 1 returns to normal values after what? 4 days. Kaya mapapansin mo, kahit hindi na nag-chest pain ng pasyente mo, tuloy pa rin ang blood extraction mo ng ano, troponin mo. Minsan tatlong cycle pa yan. Now, serial measurements,
Ito. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na troponin T returns to normal values after 10 days while troponin 1 returns to normal values after 4 days. Serial numbers or measurements are important to compare with the baseline test. Elevations are clinically significant in the diagnosis of cardiac pathology. All right. All right. Now let's proceed. What are the normal values for your troponins? Ito na yung table. Pakinggan, screenshot, eh, screenshot, <laughs> screenshot mo na. Ito na. Now, sa troponin, ang normal value mo is what? Less than 0.4 nanograms per milliliter. Again, troponin is less than 0.4 nanograms per milliliter. Sa cardiac troponin T mo naman, troponin T ha, less than 0.1 nanograms per milliliter. Again, cardiac troponin T, less than 0.1 nanograms per milliliter. Sa cardiac troponin I or troponin 1, ano ang normal range, normal lab values mo, less than 0.03 nanograms per milliliter. Again, cardiac troponin 1, Less than 0.03 nanograms per milliliter. Meaning to say, pag increased level sa mga normal values na, yun, na yan, pwede nag mi ang pasyente mo. I-discuss natin yung mga indications sa susunod na slide. Eto na sila. Increased troponin levels may indicate what? These following conditions. Unang-una, myocardial infarction. Kaya nga cardiac marker sila, hindi ba? Ah, pangalawa is yung myocardial injury. What are the nursing considerations? Very important whenever you handle patients na um, you're trying to get the troponin levels, blood extraction ito. Una, nurse, makinig, rotate venipuncture sites. Venipuncture sites, bakit? Kasi palagian nga po ang extraction nito. Depende sa order ng doktor. Ito siya. Testing is repeated in 12 hours or as prescribed, followed by daily testing for 3 to 5 days. Nasa, minsan may depende sa doktor, minsan 3 cycles ng troponin, then what? ECG. 3 cycles yon every 6 hours. Q6. Then followed by every 12 hours for the next 3 to 5 days. Okay? Kasi naalala mo, kailan, kailan nawawala yung, naalala mo yung duration o yung level ng troponin mo? Bago siya mawala sa bloodstream, umabot siya ng 10 days. Okay? Malino ba ang ating troponin? Malinaw. Now, let's proceed to your uh, natriuretic peptides. Eto na siya. Now, there are three major peptides when you talk about uh, natriuretic peptides. But first of all, natriu, uh, natriu, uh, but first of all, natriuru, ah, hindi ko siya ma-pronounce. Natriuretic peptides are neuroendocrine peptides that are used to identify clients with heart failure. Now, Nilagay ko dito yung three major peptides para mas madali mo siyang maalala. Una na dyan, yung atrial natriuretic peptides, yung ANP. Makikita mo to sa mga, sa laboratory ng pasyente mo. ANP. Now, synthesized in cardiac ventricle muscle. Brain natriuretic peptides, o yung tinatawag na BNP. Now, this synthesized in the cardiac ventricle Muscle. C-type natriuretic peptides o yung ating CNP, this is synthesized in the what? Endothelial cells. Alright? Now, very important reminder you guys, ito po siya. BNP is the primary marker for identifying heart failure as the cause of what? Dysmia. Now, the higher the BNP level, the more severe the heart failure. If the BNP level is elevated, dysmia is due to heart failure. It is normal that dysmia is due to pulmonary problem. All right? Now, if it, let me just say that one more time. If the BNP level is elevated, this and like the dysmia ang pasyente mo, difficulty of breathing, the dysmia is probably due to the heart failure. But, 
if it's normal, if the BNP is normal at active dyspnea ang pasyente mo, the dyspnea is due to the pulmonary problem and it's not heart-related. Gets? Gets. So once again, these are the three major peptides. Alright, proceed na tayo. Now, what are the normal values for your natriuretic peptides? Normal range sa kabila, ito yung mga natriuretic peptides na diniscuss natin. We have your atrial natriuretic peptide, ANP. Normal range, 22 to 77 nanograms per, mil, uh, nanograms per liter na siya. Now, yung brain natriuretic peptides mo, yung BNP. Less than 100 nanograms per liter. The C-type natriuretic peptide naman, yung CNP, reference range provided with results should be reviewed. So once again, these are the normal values for your natriuretic peptides. Now what are the indications if you have an increased natriuretic peptide levels in blood? Una na dyan ay yung congestive heart failure. Maaring may congestive heart failure ng pasyente mo. Pangalawa, core pulmonale. Pamilya sa concept? Let me know sa baba if you want me to do a discussion about it. Now, heart transplant rejection. If recently nag-undergo uh, nag ang pasyente ng heart transplant and mataas ang natriuretic peptides mo, the patient is probably having rejection of the organ. Next, myocardial infarction, MI pa rin. Pangatlo, ay, um, panglima na, systemic hypertension. Now, what are the nursing consideration when you are taking um, a natriuretic peptide test to a patient? Well, fasting is not required. Pwedeng kumain ng pasyente mo, hindi nila kailangan mag-fast. Okay? Now, Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Hope you learned something today about your cardiac markers. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel to uh, for more nursing education of vid uh, videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do. Comment it down below. Abangan yung apa yung upload natin next week pa another sets of nursing discussion nga ang alay ko sa inyo for next week. Kaya naman, mag-subscribe ka na sa channel ko. Tulungan mo na nga, ipamalita mo na sa radyong sira ang pinakabago, pinaka-fresh, at ang pinakalibre ng nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. Also, maisingit ko lang, bukas ha, wag mong kalimutan, pakinggan mo, panoorin mo, mag-subscribe ka sa podcast channel ko. I'll be putting the link to my podcast on the description box and or you can just search it up on your Spotify account or every podcast platform, whatever podcast platform you have. It's 3 a.m. conversation with Neil Gave. And if you haven't checked out my other social media accounts, my Facebook page, Everything is at Neil Gabe, except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Gabe Official. I will see you again next week, and you have a blessed weekend.